it's very rare that we see Magnus playing the London system. Now, this game was a perfect example on how good he is with the London system as well. Hey, chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dherabaga, and let me take you through this game that was played between Magnus Carlsen, the current world champion, and Vladimir Tramnik, who is also a very strong GM. And this game was outright very classical show of the London system. If you are a London system player, then definitely you would love it, watching this till the end. So please stay tuned. Even if you are a fan of Magnus Carlsen or a just a chess lover like me. So let me take you through this game. It starts off with D4, uh, which is the typical London system setup. Begins with D4. And then you place your bishop out uh, onto F4. You play pawn to E3, pawn to C3. Uh, develop the knight on f3 and d2 respectively put your queen on c2 castle queen side and then go for the pawn storm uh, attacking the opponent is the idea in the london so here kramnik responds with knight to f6 and knight to f3 by carlson kramnik plays d5 bishop to f4 now as expected but here comes c5 uh, from Kramnik, which is quite aggressive in the opening. You want to take on the pawn, maybe you can. You just want to remain, maintain this pressure. The problem with this is that if white goes for the pawn take, that's bad because then what can happen is uh, Kramnik can play pawn forward. Kramnik has gained the majority of the center. If you see, the pawn can be pushed as well. And the bishop is now coming out uh, to take the pawn next. The knight will be developed as well onto c6. It would be a good structure for black to play. This pawn is not a big threat. Uh, so you can give away that pawn. So taking is bad here. So of course, Carlson didn't take, but went with e3. Now knight to c6 uh, by Kramnik. And here comes knight to d2 by Carlson, connecting both the knights as planned. Uh, here, Kramnik takes the pawn. Now generally, you should not take the pawn this early, but continue on development, like pawn forward, bishop out. You can maybe put your queen out onto b6 as well, attacking the pawn. That's one of the famous lines in the London that you should be going for. But maybe Kramnik thought that Magnus is always aware of all these. So try to do something different. Took on the pawn here. And Carlson responds with pawn takes, of course. Can take with the knight as well, but you generally want to block it with the pawn itself. Also, this opens up the e file. So whenever you castle, your rook will be centralized in the open file, which is nice. Here comes queen to b6 by Kramnik and Magnus plays knight to b3 instead of playing pawn forward because if b3 is played, you are losing the control of this diagonal for sure and suddenly you see bishop coming down and eyeing this and it's, it's a problem eventually. So here uh, Kramnik plays bishop to e2, developing the bishop and Magnus plays bishop to e6, the idea of castling now maybe on the king's side. I'll just close the opening explorer here. Uh, so here, pawn to e6 uh, by Kramnik, trying to develop the bishop now next, or uh, Magnus castles. And here comes bishop to e7. There's no much good square for the bishop apart from either b3, uh, b4 or e2, e7. So he chooses e7 because if, if it comes to b4, then simple move like pawn forward would complete this triangle as well, also push the bishop. So there's no point in wasting moves. Uh, here comes a4 by Magnus, trying to expand on the queen side now, because you have castle on the king side, so you don't want to push these pawns for now. But continue your play on the queen side. Also, if you see, the bishops are pretty vicious already. Knight is kind of ready to go on to e5 sometime soon. So the, the attack is going to be on the queen side, primarily. Here, Kramnik plays a6, just maybe making sure uh, there's an escape square for the queen. Uh, and Magnus pushes the pawn forward to a5 so that the queen has to be moved. Now, queen moves to d8, which is kind of rare. You don't completely undevelop your queen, but Kramnik didn't have much options. There was actually one of this option where the Kramnik can uh, take the queen on to a7 and still eye the diagonal towards the king, but would be passive there because the pawn is there in the center, which is well controlled by knights and the queen. So, uh, and this square, c7, is already controlled by the light square bishop, which you can sometimes uh, leave out as well, but of course, grandmasters won't. So, he went back to queen to d8. 
Magnus sees this uh, as an opportunity of planting the knight onto e5. It's a very good controlling square in London. You always place your knight on e5, which is kind of helpful in growing your attack. Uh, now here, Kramnik plays rook to c8. Another nice move. Not willing to trade off because, of course, pawn trade can also happen. Uh, can take with the bishop as well. Suddenly, the knight is also attacked. So why do go for exchange, but rather improve the position of pieces? Now rook to c5, which is a semi-open file already. And now if a knight takes, Kramnik will have a choice to take with the pawn so that the center pawns are connected or just take with the rook and do a rook lift. Uh, here, finally, Carlson plays c3, which means the pawn structure is now solid. And now Kramnik castles. It's move number 13. Uh, the development is finally done from both the sides. And we move towards the middle game further. Rook to e1 by Carlson, just improving the position of rook. Also, whenever rook comes onto e5, the idea is sometimes even to push your bishop backwards onto f1. Why so? Because this always defends the g2 as well. Because this bishop, if you see, isn't doing much as of now. It is covering up a couple of diagonals, but a diagonal towards the queen side isn't that helpful as of now. Even on the king side, there are pieces lining up. So you either can just simply push your bishop backwards, which will defend your pawn as well. So that in just in case attack comes in, you are able to defend it. Here, knight to e4 by Kramnik. And Magnus goes with bishop to d3, attacking the knight. Finally, Kramnik takes the knight on e5. And uh, Magnus takes with bishop. Again, the idea is to put the bishop on a good diagonal towards the king. Uh, later on in the game, you would like to transport your queen to one of these squares, which are not being attacked, of course, and threaten checkmate. This bishop is nice, and if pawn forward is moved to kick this bishop backwards, again, that's weakening up of this diagonal, which can be later on exploited with the bishop or the queen from the other side of the board. So bishop now goes back to g6 first uh, by Kramnik. And now bishop to f4 by uh, Carlson as well, because now the threat was that pawn forward can come, and it won't be a weakness as well, because bishop can always go back which will defend the diagonal too. So a very strategic gameplay in the middle, as you see. So a very professional chess by both the players. Now knight to d6 by Kramnik offering a trade of bishop against the knight so that his bishop gets onto a very nice active square, which of course doesn't happen. Magnus takes the bishop, but the light square bishop here, uh, and then uh, Kramnik has to choose with which pawn you have to take. Uh, and it's okay to take with the edge pawn because the file is not opened up. If the file was opened up, then it's risky, uh, but it's not opened up. And if you take with the other pawn, then suddenly this diagonal is weakened up, which can be exploited with the queen, as I told earlier. Here, uh, now Magnus takes the knight as well with the bishop, looking forward to go to an end game. Generally, there's a mutual respect between the grandmasters as well that, okay, both the players will fight it out. Maybe in, in between also, they will go for a draw. Uh, after bishop takes, uh, here Magnus goes with pawn to g3, uh, making sure that the bishop is always cut off. There's no threats. Now b5 by Kramnik. The idea is if and Pasan happen, uh, Kramnik can take with the queen. His queen will be active. If not, the pawn is already expanded. So here Magnus takes the pawn and queen takes back. Now, rook to e2, which will defend the pawn once, whenever the knight is moved out. You want to make sure your, all your pawns are defended now. It will be a closely contested end game, most likely. So that's why you would you want to defend your pawns first. Uh, here comes n rook to e b8 uh, with the battery now attacking on the knight. Now it's defended only once, so you have to move the knight. Uh, so knight comes back to c1. There's no much choice as well for the knight. Uh, can go on to uh, a5 as well, but it's passive. It, it cannot go further anywhere. Uh, so it, the knight can be trapped for sure. So rather go back. If you go on to d2, then you lose the pawn because you are coming in the rook's way of defending it. Now, of course, uh, Krami cannot take because he lose the queen. Um, so here he starts playing a5 now. Now knight to d3. Uh, probably one of the only pieces that would have been uh, improved as of now, which again defends upon us uh, and knight is preparing to go up as well. Uh, a centralized knight would help. Here Kramnik goes with 
queen to b5 which is kind of attacking the rook as well and the knight knight definitely can be moved but if you try to move the queen suddenly uh, and forget that the, the, it was a pin eventually so you can lose the knight or the rook as well so you have to be careful magnus goes for h4 trying to expand now on the king side he has to do some active uh, attack from the other side of the board if you are being attacked on one side of the board counter attack very important here comes a rook to c8 uh, trying to just make sure that the other rook is, is also into the picture uh, and here magnus plays a rook to d2 so that now the queen can simply walk over to uh, the side of the board any any square that queen wants to uh, because now the knight is defended and also the, the pin on the rook is uh, removed. Here comes uh, rook to a8 uh, by Kramnik. And now Carlsen pushes for the pawn. The idea is if, if pawn takes, of course, queen improves the position. And the h file will also be opened up. And if you see how Magnus has cleverly opened up the pawns, which also means that king can simply go to g2, queen goes up onto h5, and rook comes onto h1, threatening checkmate. So the, it's important how you move these pawns as well, uh, making sure that you can just move your king out of the way and attack. Now, it, it was important that how, how you are creating this attack, you are creating it when every other piece is involved on the queen side. It's not doing anything on the other side of the board. Only a bishop is eyeing this, which is also defended, so not a problem. And then you can con continue attacking on the other side of the board. So first, defense is important, then attacking. Here, Kramnik takes the pawn. Carlsen takes with the queen. And now pawn forward g6 uh, by Kramnik. Carlsen moves the queen up onto h6, so that now, of course, king can come up, and the rook will be handy as well. Uh, here, Kramnik plays a4, trying to expand further, trying to go for a pawn trade, and maybe win, uh, exchange the rooks as well, because the bishop is already lying there. Maybe that's the idea. So here, king to g2 by Carlsen now threatening to go for uh, rook to h1, which would lead to a checkmate quickly. Uh, so bishop comes back to f8, which pushes the queen for now. So queen comes back onto f4. Now, could have uh, remained in the same file as well, is can be one argument, but he's trying to make a different piece also get into the action. You don't want to just go with two pieces into an attack. Here comes knight most likely to e5, which will attack the pawn. Uh, you are threatening checkmate uh, because once you take with the queen, the king will have to go, and then you can just get your rook in between. So here comes bishop to g7, which means that if knight comes, open has a chance to take the knight. Knight still comes to e5, irrespective of the fact. And now queen back to e8, just getting the resources back in time to defend everything. You want to defend the pawn uh, and a rook lift could have helped, uh, but Kramnik chooses the queen because the queen wasn't participating in anything as of now. And here comes rook to d3 by Carlsen. Now rook to d3 looks subtle, but the idea is to place it on f3 and then there are three attackers uh, on to the f7. So a subtle move which improves the position of another piece and contributes to the attack. Here Kramnik goes with f6. Again, that's what Carlsen has been wanting to uh, make sure that this kind of a thing happen because now knight can just simply move back. You have made a weakness in the opponent's pawn structure. Uh, these pawns are kind of weak now. As soon as one of the defenders are removed or you can just simply take the pawn here because it is only defended once as of now. So Kramnik plays queen to f8, which defends the pawn. And here comes the rook to f3, as planned by Carlsen, trying to exploit the uh, fact that these pawns are weak here. Now third attacker on the pawn, just trying to build up pressure, not doing much. Here comes a3, which was very bad in this position because things are falling apart here. You should be trying to cover up uh, how to defend that situation, but you are trying to play on the other side of the board. Here, uh, Carlsen takes the pawn first, so Carlsen is pawn up. Uh, now, of course, you can take the rook and uh, Magnus can also take back, but then your queen has to go out of the defense completely, which can be drastic. So that's why comes f5, uh, trying to make sure that the, the pressure point, which was f6 now, is, isn't anymore. But guess what? Magnus doesn't care because 
the attack will continue queen to g5 now attacking a pawn and if you see the engine evaluation also it's slightly improved it was 0.4 then 1.3 suddenly it has come down to come up to 2.5 of course uh, this cannot be taken because queen loses on the spot so here uh, Kramnik plays uh, king to f7 trying to escape maybe on the other side of the board because this rook is also coming but the rook still comes rook to h1 Kramnik takes a pawn which he thinks is a free pawn which isn't actually because here comes rook to h7 first which pins the bishop for now here Kramnik takes another pawn doesn't matter Magnus goes with knight to h6 which is the check which you cannot take and if you see how beautifully these pieces are coordinated uh, so Kramnik goes to rook uh, king to e8 Magnus takes a pawn onto g6 uh, and in this position Kramnik plays king to d8 and then decides to resign why so because if you see everything is being uh, fallen apart you can take the rook first you can take this as well uh, with the queen too you can take uh, you can give a check as well with the knight improve the position further plant maybe here this is already pinned you can take the rook and eliminate this threat so that you don't lose a rook for sure so it, it is completely winning position as per the engine as well and that's why kramnik resigns so a perfect gameplay of the london system if you see kramnik was never in the game at best he was 0.6 and that too in the opening part where Magnus had played bishop onto e2 preparing to castle which looks like a very reasonable move there's no such threats yes knight can come here attacking uh, the pawn on c2 but it's not a problem it can be definitely defended let's just say knight comes in you can place the bishop in between trade of the bishops and you're okay with this yes there are double pawns but you can this is always playable position center double pawns are not that bad as well so it was completely in control of Magnus throughout uh, average centi pawn loss of 18 which is very nice and the game went pretty well for Magnus with the London as well. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was instructive and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did please do subscribe to the channel as well and I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye bye.